So in this video, I am going to go over the definition of a compact set. Now, to understand what a compact set means beforehand, you guys are going to need to understand a couple of other concepts. So one of these concepts is the epsilon neighborhood, which is usually denoted with this kind of symbol and notation, and also need to know what a closed set is. I have done a video where I talk about what we mean by the epsilon neighborhood and what a closed set is, and I'll put that video, the link of that video in the description, because understanding the epsilon neighborhood and understanding the definition of a closed set is very important. But in this video, I am going to quickly go over these two concepts anyway. But if you want a, a deeper understanding, I recommend you guys check out that video. But when it comes to a compact set, the definition of this is pretty simple. It only requires two things. And the first thing is that the set is closed. And the second thing, or the second requirement for a set to be compact is that it is bounded. And once our set is both closed and bounded, then we can say that it is compact. So we're going to go over these two concepts, what a closed set is and what a bounded set is in this video. And then any set that satisfies these two requirements, we can say it is a compact set. So one of the two requirements for our set to be compact is that the set has to be closed. So what we mean by a closed set, uh, very briefly, is that it basically just includes its points on the boundary, or its, it, its limit points. So for example, if we were to draw a set, let's call this set S, closed, this set would be closed if it included its points here, for example, like this say point X here on the limit or on the, on the boundary of the set. Another one here, for example, because in this case, when there is a point on the boundary, we can find an epsilon neighborhood with radius E, whereby this epsilon neighborhood is not completely contained within the set S. As we can see, this area here is not contained within the larger set S. And so a closed set just is a set that includes its end points or points on the boundary. So in terms of a number line or an interval, just the interval 0, 1 with square brackets, which would mean this because it includes its end points or limit points. As we can see, it's equal. it can be equal to 0 or equal to 1. This would be a closed set. So that's what we mean by a closed set. It just includes its points on the boundary or its endpoints or its limit points, whatever way you want to put it. So the second requirement of a compact set, in addition to the set being closed, is that it also has to be bounded. Now, all we mean by a bounded set is a set that is of finite size. So it doesn't go to infinity. It has some sort of boundaries and all its points are within some limit of each other. So it's quite a simple, simple concept. So an example of a set that is not bounded would be, say, the set 2 to infinity. Because this goes to infinity, it is not finite in size, it is not bounded. But the set, say, 2, 5, it is bounded. It starts at 2, it ends at 5. It doesn't continue to infinity. So all we're saying when we're talking about a bounded set is that the set doesn't go to infinity. That's the easiest way to think about it. It's finite in size. So how do we prove this? formally with notation and we have some sort of solid definition 
to use as it? instead of just saying it, it's finite, we need to kind of formally prove that. So what we're going to use is, again, our epsilon neighborhood, which you should by now have a, a good understanding of what we mean by epsilon neighborhood in this case. An epsilon neighborhood of point x, that's what we have in the, the bracket, that's what we would be referring to. So to think about this, what we're going to do is we're going to draw, again we're going to draw a set, and we're going to call this set S. We want to know that this set doesn't go to infinity. I mean, we can see, just because it has this line here, that it's it has some sort of boundary, and that it does not continue to infinity, and it doesn't just, you know, it has bounds, in other words, it is finite. But we need to formally prove it. Because we can't just look at it and say, yeah, obviously it's it's not an infinite set because it has this this boundary here, just this solid line. We need to formally prove that. So just using kind of common sense, we can kind of guess that the easiest way to prove that this set is finite is by finding another larger set, for example, so that would completely encapsulate this set. And then once we have found a larger set, for example, that completely encapsulates our set S, then we have in a way proven that set S is finite. So for example, let's pick the point here. And let's say that this point has radius epsilon. What that would mean is that this set would with radius epsilon would be draw. This is not a very good circle. This should be a nice round circle with, with radius epsilon. But if we picked an epsilon with this radius, we can see that the open ball produced by this epsilon completely encapsulates our original set S. Thus, we can, this leads us kind of naturally to the definition, the formal way or one of the formal ways to define a bounded set. And that is that if we can find an epsilon that is greater than zero, some epsilon greater than zero, if our original set S is completely contained within the epsilon neighborhood governed by that epsilon, then our set S is going to be bounded. So in this case, this circle here this open ball with radius epsilon, this is our epsilon neighborhood. And since it completely encapsulates our original set S, or in other words, it is completely contained, set S is completely contained within the epsilon neighborhood, we have thus proven that S is a bounded set.